In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add links to images in WordPress. This is part of the WordPress basic skills playlist. It's linked to in the description down below. If you have any questions about WordPress and how it works, it's probably answered in that playlist. So check that out. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them down below. I try to answer the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. If we click into this blog post right here, which we created in a recent video, we have an image in the blog post, which is the same as the featured image, this image right here, and it's not clickable. You can click on it all day long, nothing happens, but it is an image and we're going to add a link to it. To do that, we just go to edit post, click on the image, and we'll see an action bar appear up here. I don't know what to call it actually, and a bar where you can take actions and do things with the image. And this bar will be different depending on what block you click on. So if you click on a text block, it's gonna have different options than we have for an image block. And one of the options pretty much every block has is insert link. If you hover over these, it'll tell you what they are. So if you can't find the link one, just hover over things and hopefully you'll find one that says insert link. Click on insert link and you can start typing your link right here. And we can link to various places. We can link to places that are not on the website. So if we type in this right here, this will take us to Google when someone clicks that link. And we hit this curly curvy arrow to apply it. And now we have that link set. Then we click on update, click on view posts in the bottom left down here. And now if we hover over the link in the post, we see the hand appears. If we click on it, we go to Google. It's been six months since your last Google account visit. Doesn't seem right. I'm on Google almost every day. Anyway, so there we have our link. And we can also have other links. So that's a link that goes off your site. That's an external link. You can also have internal links. If you wanted to link to a different post on your site, you just start typing the name of the post. If you know what the titles are, or at least the keywords in them, results will start appearing. So if I just type in food, it's searching right now. That's what this dial indicates. So here's one post, food intolerance testing, is it worth it? If you have multiple posts containing the word food, they would all appear in here. I want to click on that one, click on apply. And now this image will link to that post. Let's click on update, click on view posts in the bottom left. And now when I click on the link, it's going to take us to the other post, the food intolerance post right here. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. Let's close this and go back into here. Click on the link again. Click on X to delete that link. We can also link to a media file and media file will link to the media file of this image. It's not commonly done, that kind of link. An attachment page will be a separate page that contains just this image also not commonly done. The most common links you're going to have on your website are links to other websites or links to other pages and posts within your websites. Meeting and attachment is not very frequent. This down arrow here gives some more link options. You can open links in a new tab. This is what you commonly do when you link outside your website. You want to open that in a new tab. When you're linking within your website, we would turn this off. And so we just maintain one tab when they're navigating within our website. And link rel or link relationship, this is where you can add what the link means or any kind of attributes you want to assign to the link. This is more advanced. The most common rel you're going to have is nofollow. And this is what you do when you link to other websites that you don't want to share your influence with or your link juice or your page ranking power. When you link out to other pages, either on your site or other sites, it, it is an upvote to search engines, especially Google, saying that site I'm linking to, that's a site of quality, otherwise I wouldn't be linking to it. And I want to share some of my prominence, some of my link juice, some of my page rank with that site. When you choose no follow, it either reduces how much you share with them a lot or, or takes it right down to zero. The true answer is not known. Google doesn't really tell you exactly. But the idea is when you choose no follow as the link relationship, you are not passing on your influence or your page rank power to the other site. You're keeping it all on yours. So that's the most common link relationship you'll be using. 
And link CSS class, this allows you to add a class that allows you to customize the appearance of a link. So you could have a class for every link on your website and have every link appear different if you wanted to. This is more advanced. If you're just learning how to add links to an image, you're probably not learning how to do CSS classes. So, so don't worry about this until your skills are a little more advanced, but just be aware that it's here. And then whenever you've made changes, make sure you click on update to apply those changes to the post. So that's how we add links inside of the Gutenberg editor, but there's other places where links could appear. If we go back to our WordPress editor and we find a page that's built with Elementor, let's do this one right here. Click on edit with Elementor. Elementor is a very popular page builder. You may have heard of it. It allows you to quickly and easily construct very good looking pages. If you take your time and you do it right, you can quickly and easily build great pages. And Elementor is not the only one. You could use Divi or Brizzy or Beaver Builder or Oxygen or Thrive Themes. There's so many page builders out there that do basically the same thing. Elementor just got so popular because they have a very powerful free version. And what they also have is images and image links. So I'm going to just add an image. Just going to drag and drop it over here. And let's click on this icon here. Let's put our smoothie back in there. So it's the same image as before. And here in a page builder, adding links is a little bit different. We have our options on the left here for Elementor. With Brizzy, you'd have the options appear right on the image, just like we had a little toolbar in Gutenberg. The toolbar would appear right in the editor. With Divi, you can have it set either way. So depending on which page builder you're using, you're gonna find these tools in different places. And if we make sure we're on the Edit Image Workspace on the Content tab, we have a link option which is by default set to none. You can set it to media file, which is that image file like we saw earlier, not commonly done, or custom URL. We can add our custom link in here just like we did before. Enter Google in there, click on update down below, and now that's gonna be a link to Google. We can click on the gear icon for the link options. We have similar options as before. We have open in a new window, which is what you commonly do if you link off of your site. You'd have add no follow. That's also commonly done for SEO when you're linking off your site. If you're linking within your site, you wouldn't turn either of those on. And custom attributes are much more advanced. Not something you have to worry about right now. But that's how you add an image inside of the Elementor page builder. Other page builders will be very similar as well. Whenever you're done making changes, make sure you click on update to apply those changes, otherwise your work won't be saved. If you found this video helpful, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this playlist right here. It's the WordPress basic skills playlist on my YouTube channel. It'll answer lots and lots of WordPress questions for you. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.